thank you again for joining us for this third episode of Wagon Wednesday, where we talk with our training and enrichment team here at El Paso Animal Services on some frequently asked questions and concerns um, from adopters, fosters, and just pet owners in general. So uh, today we have Miriam Martinez joining us again. Uh, for those of you that might just be joining us for the first time, Miriam has been with us for quite some time. She's been a trainer for over 15 years, um, and she's been with us uh, at El Paso Animal Services as a training and enrichment coordinator for numerous years. So she has a lot of experience and background in working with a wide variety of pets. Uh, so today we're actually going to be talking about separation anxiety because a lot of us are going to be going back to work pretty soon or we're already going back to work, uh, which is going to be causing some stress in our pets. Um, so Miriam, can you talk a little bit about what are some signs of separation anxiety in pets? Um, real separation anxiety in pets is actually um, um, a severe need that needs to be addressed right away. Um, there are different stages and uh, cases of, of uh, the level of severity for separation anxiety. A mild case would be whining, or maybe destroying the blanket, um, destroying some other stuff when you leave the house, and um, a severe case of separation anxiety would be defecating, urinating in the kennel, injuring themselves, uh, salivating. It goes, the list goes on, and uh, trying to frantically escape confinement of the crate, the house. Um, I've known dogs uh, with separation anxiety as bad as breaking a window to go after the owner and that's that's dangerous not only for the animal but for everybody else involved and uh, that needs to be addressed right away with a veterinary behaviorist. Mild separation anxiety however can be fixed and worked up to um, without that. So what are some uh, ways that people can start preparing their pets uh, for them being away, uh, whether they're just a little bit distressed or showing signs of separation anxiety? I think everybody should prepare their pets regardless whether they're showing stress or separation anxiety or any signs. Um, the dog should be, learn, should be learning to be alone. And uh, the way to do that is, first of all, we need to set up an alone zone. Um, I call it an alone zone, which could be a comfortable room with a baby gate where they can still see you and uh, but uh, where they can rest and have all their stuff that they need. Um, the alone zone is typically associated with great treats and uh, we've talked about some enrichment items before but I always like Kongs frozen and stuff with great food or I mean everybody knows best what their animal likes or doesn't like um, it could be a bully stick, high value treats that will keep them busy for a little bit of time, food puzzles, whatever you um, can bring to that alone zone that will make them happy about being there. And, um, and in that alone zone, the dog will learn how to be alone. <laughs> so alone zone, yeah. Yes. So, so you uh, should put your pet in a crate or get them used to being put in a crate if they're starting to show some signs of distress? Yes, uh, uh, crate, crate training is a great tool for us to um, contain the animal safely and uh, keep it occupied. We don't want them always glued together. So even when you're home right now, at this point, the dog should have a crate that is comfortable. And every time it goes in there, it gets a great treat, like the Kong. And we already talked about uh, the bully sticks and stuff like that. And if you have a dog that does display mild symptoms of separation anxiety, you should stay within sight when you ever, whenever you, uh, you crate the dog. And once the dog can comfortably eat whatever you gave it to him, whatever you gave to him, then, that, then it's time to go out of sight for a little bit. Once you're out of sight and you know that the dog is still eating um, and it's not crying or, or trying to break out of the crate, then it's time to take it a step further and leave the house for short periods of time, take out the trash. And um, it depends on the level of uh, anxiety the dog goes through when it's left alone, but uh, always work up a step from, don't fully expose the dog, just stick it in the crate and leave for 30 minutes um, because that could potentially do more damage than good. Okay, Miriam, so sometimes people will uh, associate, you know, destructive behavior like chewing up furniture or on the walls or something like that um, with boredom. When is it, when is, what's the difference between boredom and separation anxiety with destructive behavior? Well, boredom is just 
boredom <laughs> and separation anxiety is more focused on two uh, entryways such as the door trying to come after the owner window seals blinds uh, the door of the kennel breaking out of the kennel and distress so boredom is easily alleviated with crating the dog the crate is just an all-around great tool and giving the dog something appropriate to chew on because uh, like my co-worker said last week uh, Chewing is not something that we can eliminate in dogs because it's part of their normal behavior. So we just want to give them items that are appropriate to chew. And it's our responsibility to provide those uh, items so we can't really blame the dog for, for it. So um, um, boredom and separation anxiety completely different. Um, and I'm, I'm, I want to bring up this question because I know uh, this gets asked a lot or is assumed a lot with crate training your pet and that it might be seemed as cruel to leave your pet in a crate for long periods of time in a day. Uh, what, what do you have to say about crate training in, in that sort of sense? Dogs naturally are my spirit animal. They sleep 14 hours a day, just like I try to achieve and they're completely happy in a crate if it's set up and associated right with something awesome um, whether they sleep inside of your crate or they sleep outside in the living room i think uh, they don't really uh, care um, but it should be associated with something with something great a dog a crate should never be used for punishment or something like that a timeout is different but um, the dog should not associate the crate with something bad that happens to it always something positive and so that's a great point to talk on in the future. Um, that's something that we can definitely uh, touch on in a future episode and how to create a crate um, as a safe space for your pet and not necessarily use it as punishment because then they're not going to want to go into it because it's not going to be a safe space because it's been used as a bad thing for them in the past. So uh, we can definitely cover that in a future episode. Are there other ways that you can help reduce your pet's stress? Um, whether it's when you're leaving or at home or something like that? Yes, so um, there's uh, supporting supporting um, uh, things you can uh, provide for the dog. There's thunder, thunder shirts, there's um, anxiety wraps that you can um, do with a, an ACE bandage. Uh, you can do DAP diffusers, um, lavender oil, all those things that help relax an animal and associate it with, it, with the crates, but um, for fosters or for people that just got their dogs, it's actually, this is a good time to, to build up and desensitize to uh, departure cues. That means um, putting on your shoes, getting ready to leave, picking up your keys, but then not leaving. The dog is not hasn't been in the home for a very long time, so it hasn't had the chance to build up emotional responses to departure cues. So now is the time to do that, especially for our fosters if you're watching. But um, um, it's always important to know that an animal, if you want to change a trigger, and a trigger is the event that causes behavior, um, the animal should not be fully exposed to it, but should be worked up slowly. Um, and that's, we're talking minute increments, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Is there anything else that you'd like to add, maybe for someone that uh, might have a pet that is actually suffering from severe separation anxiety, any advice for them? Yes, uh, dogs that are injuring themselves or are in severe distress when the owner leaves, they really need the support of a, vet, a veterinary behaviorist. Um, a person like that, a veterinary behaviorist needs to take on that case and work in conjunction with maybe a trainer and medicine um, to change that, but it's a lengthy um, process and they really need that veterinary support. So if, if you have a dog like that, please contact us at EPAS trainers at El Paso, Texas .gov, And we will help you in the right direction to find such a veterinary behaviorist and somebody who can help you. Because this, this just isn't something that kind of goes away overnight or they get kind of desensitized after three or four days like being left at home alone. Uh, it's gonna continue, right? Uh, behavior never gets better over time. It usually always gets worse, especially when it's distress. Uh, an animal has to set success breaking out of the crate once. It's going to try harder again. It might injure itself further. Um, they might redirect at other animals due to stress and anxiety. And um, it's really important to have a veterinary behaviorist on staff. I don't feel that this is something a trainer should do without a veterinary 
uh, behaviorist overseeing the case and the medications. Well, those are really great points. And I mean, for those of you that are out there and you are uh, needing some support from, you know, a trainer or some advice or something, feel free to contact us. We're here to support you guys, um, our adopters, our fosters, our community. So if you are truly dealing with something, uh, just know that you guys aren't alone. We're here to help. We're here to be a resource for you guys. Um, so is there anything else you'd like to add, Miriam? That's it. No, I have nothing. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us, Miriam, and thank you guys so much for tuning in again for this third episode of Wagon Wednesday. Uh, tune in next week. Uh, we're going to have another episode every Wednesday uh, where we talk about uh, any kind of behavior or training advice with our training and enrichment team. If you guys have anything specific that you guys would like us to touch on, feel free to enter in the comments below and we'll uh, touch on it in a future episode. But until then, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Bye.